All right, we just got back into the hangar and let's see if we caught a mouse. <laughs> so we did in fact catch a mouse and right there he is. And the question is, is this the only mouse in here? He looks pretty skinny. It makes me wonder what he's been eating this whole time. We've had the 401 in the hangar here for, for quite some time. So that means that he was eating something around here and there's nothing in the hangar anywhere that he can eat. So I guess we're gonna have to give him a name. Can't We can't name him Cessna because that would just sound kind of weird, I think. But Piper, I think we could call him Piper. And we'll figure out a way that we can release him where he won't instantly freeze. All right, Piper. Time to set you free. Hopefully you find a nice warm place to go. See you, bud. Welcome back to Rebuild Rescue. We're back in the hangar today. We got some parts for the 401. We're gonna pull the engine apart, see if we can figure out why it's not starting, get the new parts in it, and see if we can't get this thing started. Let's get at it. So we're going to get these cylinders off. We're gonna check and make sure that the rings aren't seized on the pistons in the bores. We can hear a lot of squealing when you turn the prop on this engine. On the other engine, it doesn't do it. So my thought was these air-cooled airplane cylinders have a taper bore in them. So they're actually wider at one point of the bore than the other point. So I'm thinking what happened is those rings probably seized onto the piston in an expanded manner. So there's just a ton of friction. So we're gonna pull these off. We're gonna get the rings out. We're gonna clean everything up. And we're gonna also then, once these are off, we're gonna be able to see what does this thing look like inside. I can tell you now, the pistons in here are massive. They're huge. The rods are huge. I can't wait to show you. I mean, 520 cubic inches. Every engine should be 520 cubic inches. Well, I mean, unless you want any kind of fuel mileage anyway, but. So we're also going to have to pull all the intakes off. We're going to pull the exhaust off. And then we're also going to be able to hook some air pressure up to the exhaust and make sure that we're actually getting some flow out of the exhaust and it's not all stopped up. If you guys remember our Jeep CJ5 video, there was like a squirrel or something that was, you know, storing nuts in the exhaust. That actually kept that engine from running. And we do know there's been a ton of birds and mice in the 401. So what's the chances that this is clogged up today? We're gonna figure that out. So the parts that we ordered are still on back order. I know you guys were like really wanted to see uh, some more work get done in this last week. There's huge parts order backlogs. So we, you know, we did start on the Austin Healy project. If you haven't checked out that video, make sure you check out that video because we're giving an Austin Healy away and I want everybody to have a chance to enter. So check out that video, make sure you guys get entered. So the parts weren't available. A viewer did get a hold of us that had some spare parts for one of these 520s and he, he got us the parts. So let's check them out. Hey Corey, can you grab me the box cutter over there? Corey, this isn't a box cutter. Kami Koto knives. I think these are the knives that are made out of a special Japanese steel. This is like a really cool ash box it comes in as well. Let's see how well it opens our parts. This is definitely at least as sharp as a razor blade. You know, the thing about these knives is you can definitely tell that there's over 800 years of quality craftsmanship that has gone into these knives. I mean, 
they are so super sharp. It's a beautiful knife. I mean, it even feels like really, really well balanced. Each one of the Kami Kodo knives does come with a certificate of authenticity. These knives are actually handmade with Japanese steel. So it opened that box up really easily, but I wonder how durable these really are. <laughs> yeah, it cuts right through a tire, like no problem. That's definitely sharp. So now we know how good to do in the shop, cutting things that you're not supposed to cut. It, don't, don't tell my girlfriend I did that. So let's take that same knife that we just cut a tire apart with and see how it does in the kitchen for what it's really meant to be used for. Oh yeah, it slices right through it, no problem. I can't actually believe it's still sharp. So let's check out the rest of the knives and see how sharp they really are. Hopefully I still have my fingers once I'm done with this demonstration. You gotta see this, like look at this. Look at this here. It's like a complete clean cut midair. This knife set is such an awesome gift. I can't wait to get it home and surprise my girlfriend with it. So guys, don't forget, click the link up above, get your $50 discount. There's also a link in the description. And remember, every purchase of one of these Kamikoto knives, it also supports the channel, it supports the 401 project, and it supports everything that we're doing here at Rebuild Rescue. All right, I know a lot of you guys really wanted to see the interior of the 401 cleaned up today. Unfortunately, we're not gonna do that. We're working on the engine, and the reason is we have something really special in store for you guys. So you guys are just gonna have to keep checking back. It's gonna be like really cool. I'm really excited about it, but that's all I'm gonna tell you for now. So the parts that we had ordered is on back order. Um, they're having issues. So one of you viewers reached out and said, hey, you know, I have some parts sitting around. If there are anything that you can at least use to test with, you're welcome to have them. So he had sent me a spare piston and look at this piston. Look how big this thing is. I mean, it's like massive. You know, these rings that sit inside the ring lands in these pistons. If you can tell, if this would get really corroded, you know, that ring is gonna be stuck either ex expanded or it can get stuck contracted depending. So chances are they were carboned up, they're corroded. We're gonna have to pull all the cylinders off. We get to clean that all out. But just in case, we have two spare ones. We have some spare rings. We have some spare wrist pins. Nice. Oh, and it's ground down so it'll fit in there. Yep. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Listen to this. Oh. You ever hear anything like that before? No, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Feel that. Feel how hard that is to turn over. That's no yeah. compression. Yeah, that's not good. That's literally friction. That was actually Josh that stopped in from Chester County Aviation, which is here on the airfield. He's an APIA. He's been doing this way longer than I have. So it's really good to hear from folks with different ideas of what could be wrong with this. The interesting thing is I've spoke to so many APs and a lot of folks are stumped. And obviously we do need to get this engine out. We need to get it to an engine overhaul shop, a certified engine overhaul shop, so it can be totally overhauled. We have been talking to a couple of folks, you know, but that is gonna take some time. It's gonna take some time to get it scheduled. You know, we do have parts issues across the aviation industry, and that is gonna continue. So we're gonna to have to work within those restrictions and still get this thing overhauled in a decent amount of time. But before then, I want to hear this thing run. I want to see this thing like under its own power. I want to be able to like maybe taxi it around a little bit. I, I don't know. So let's dig in. We'll pop these headers off first, pop the intakes off. We're going to check for a clogged header. We're going to take this no, nose cone off. We're going to see how much stuff is stuck down in here and what it looks like. I haven't had one of these off yet, so I have no idea what it looks like under there. All right, let's get at it.
So since this hasn't really turned over fast, fast, it's gonna be interesting to see what's in here. Well, that was really uneventful. I thought for sure there'd be like a bird in here or a bat or, or something, but let's get to rip this cowling off. Too bad. All right, well, it gives us a little better look at it. Hey Sam, what's going on? Hey, just checking in, see what's up today. Do you think, uh, do you think one of these days here, you know, we could check out those airplanes you have in the hangar? Yeah, my secret stash. Yes, <laughs> yes, your secret stash. Um, you know, I, I really, I really would like to get in there and check those out. If you had some time to stop by, maybe next week. Yeah, no. Uh... We can set that up. I'll cool. meet you there one morning sometime. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds good. We're just working on the 401 today. Um, I, you know, we're going to get the, the cylinders off and, you know, we're going to hopefully get this other side fired up today. That would be awesome. Yeah. Sounds good, man. I'll talk to you then. So the rumor is Sam has two experimental Stardusters down in that hangar for like 13 years that are tore all apart. So I'm going to try to talk him into us doing a video on him. And my hopes is he lets us help him rebuild them and get them flying again. So I've been saying how awesome the aviation community is. And it's really the most awesome community that I've ever been involved in. I mean, everybody really wants to help people out. So like the other week, you know, we mentioned we need some penetrating fluid because um, quite frankly, I'm going broke buying it. So when I had asked for somebody to help with that, actually Lisa from Cano reached out and said they would love to be part of the channel, would love to give us uh, some different, of uh, you know, some, some of their products. And also you guys had said that their products are awesome. And, and so instead of just sending one thing, though, I have like every kind of lubricant, like get it loose, penetrate thing. And so the big one that you guys were mentioning on, in the comments was AeroCrawl by Cano. So Lisa, thank you very much for sending this out. We're gonna put it to good use. I'm excited to check it out. Pulling out the exhaust temperature probes. These actually stick into the exhaust pipe and gives you a readout to know, you know what temperature the exhaust gases are burning at. On airplanes, you adjust the you adjust the fuel mixture at different altitudes and depending on load of the engine and, and stuff like that. So one of the things you can do is you can adjust it to be too lean, which is detrimental, you know, for engine life. And this gives you an idea too, if there's like a problem when it's running. what the head temp probe looks like.
get this uh, under plug temp sensor out. This is interesting. So we haven't had this plug out for a while, but let me get my pick here and look at what is in the plug. If these were completely clean, looks like some carbon came loose. What's the chances that jet fuel was sitting in there and loosened some stuff up and actually fouled the plugs out? I think that's a pretty good chance. So we got all the wires loose. I'm really excited to get this header off just because I want to see if everything's all plugged up or not. Really glad we got some penetrating fluid on these because these things are tight. All right, I think, I think that was all the bolts that would be holding this header on. All right, so <clears throat> now the header's off. Let's take a look up in here in this exhaust port and see what this head looks like. There's like a ton of carbon build up up inside of there. It's a lot of what we saw up in the pistons um, on the plugs when we pulled the plugs out. When these get overhauled, like all this stuff in the, all gets cleaned out. I mean, the whole, the, literally everything will look like brand new. It's amazing what some of the overhaul shops can do. This exhaust actually looks pretty, pretty clean in there. So the exhaust actually looks pretty clean if you look down inside of there. I'm gonna get a vacuum, we're gonna put it on, uh, you know, outward pressure, have it blowing out, and we're gonna blow into this tube. So we should get positive pressure coming right out of um, the exhaust outlet if we don't then we know there's a clog somewhere from our headers over through the turbo. All right, let's see what happens. It had plenty of flow to start this engine, so the turbo, the exhaust, that's not the reason it's starting. So I'm going back to these uh, rings are seized up in there, and we're going to have to have to pull those cylinders off. So now we'll get the intake taken off and get a little bit closer to be able to take these cylinders off. That's interesting. This is the intake track. 
and we just loosen it up and we have fuel just running out of this and it's very blue it almost it, it does smell old but it, it has a different smell to it so I'm not sure why it's there's so much raw fuel in there but yeah in the intake yet too and I guess it could have been from being flooded when we were trying to fire it up but it's weird that it's very blue and it smells very old So, <laughs> I think this might have been one of our problems. That's a lot of fuel, and it's a lot of old fuel. This line right here, that's literally the line that is supposed to let the fuel out if it's flooded that's in the intake track. So what's the chances that I put compressed air through here and this line right here is clogged up. And the reason that it didn't start is because it's had half a quart of old fuel sitting on the right side of the intake track. What's the chances? It's probably pretty good. Let's get this line off and we'll run some compressed air through here. There's still stuff coming out of it. You can see right there, this line definitely has to be clogged up. So we'll go over here to the air compressor. Let's blow these out and see, see what comes out of it. Yeah, so it was it was definitely clogged up. That little clog could have been the reason that wasn't starting. Now, the rings in the cylinders are definitely still dragging on the cylinder walls, but it does have compression. What I find myself thinking is if we were to stick the intake track back on and try to fire it up now, would it start? Or would we have a major issue because of those rings dragging on the cylinder, being that they're at least a little bit hung up? With that being said, let's get this thing all apart. Let's get the cylinder off and let's get this thing to fire up.
All right, so we have all the baffling off. And now we can get to all these cylinders. We'll pop off cylinder number one first. I think the worst one is uh, cylinder three. This is a good sign to see that some of the fresh oil was inside of here. So that means that the oil that we put in there is getting uh, pressure and it is getting up. So you can see there, they're functioning properly. Both loose. We'll go ahead and pop these, the rest of these apart. Kind of tells a tale when you look at the inside of the cylinders. Um, you can see in the exhaust side, it's going to be the hot side. The intake is going to be a little cooler, but you can see the heat marks and see how hot each side got at one time or another. You can see that this side looks like it got a little more hot than the rest of them, but there's some heat on all of them at one time or another. So. Push rods out. I don't know if I'm gonna pull this cylinder off or apart. I think I'm gonna do these two. I'll do this one first and then see, see what we get. So this is how you get way back here to all the nuts that hold these cylinders on. and they're really tight. Before I pull this cylinder off, take a minute, pause the video, down the comments, is this destroyed inside? Because this is gonna tell us, I mean, I'm gonna pop this off, there's gonna be a piston, we're gonna be able to see in the cases. It's either gonna tell us like, this engine's ruined, it needs a complete overhaul to ever fire again, or there's gonna be a chance that we'll get this together and it'll run, we'll know in a few seconds. That's if I can pull this cylinder off, because it's huge. Here is our piston. Let's get this spun over. We'll get it out, out here a little bit so we can pull the wrist pin out. So all the rings are loose. It's really gunked up, but it's, it's loose. But the other thing is too, is it's really dry. There's the inside of the bore. It's actually clean versus some that I've seen in the past. It's not real bad. 
Inside the cylinder is not terrible either. It's got some pitting and could use honed out, but it's not terrible. So the rod doesn't have a bunch of uh, end of play. So that means the rod's good as well. So if we look down in there, one of the things I was curious about is the camshafts to see if they were spalling or there was anything to be really worried about. We're not gonna fly it this way. Um, you know, it does need an overhaul, but just a little more curiosity. If you look in there to the cam there, you can see how it actually looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of wear. It's not bad. The lifter has a tiny little bit of corrosion, but these Continentals, the, the cam being lower in the bore of the, the crankcase, definitely keeps more lubrication, even if it sits longer than say a Lycoming. So right here, this little tiny orifice right there. So that's an oiler. So that literally squirts oil up into the bore behind this piston, keeping everything lubricated. There's a pretty big chance that could be clogged up. So while we have this off, we're definitely gonna get some pressurized air and we'll get on that oiler. And we're just gonna force pressure back through that. You know, hopefully that gets some lubrication in these cylinders and, and stops all of that squealing and, and, you know, helps it move a little bit easier. So we got all of the retaining nuts loose for cylinder number three. And we're gonna, we're gonna pull this thing off and see what this one looks like. And it's a lot of the same. I mean, it's a little rough in there. Definitely use a hone. So judging by the way that, the way that this piston looks, um, it was obviously scraping all of the rust away on the side walls of the cylinder. But one of the thing I noticed with moving the engine, it no longer has that squealing sound. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the oil squirter is in fact clogged. And these oil rings are, are just, just totally, totally clogged up with gunk and dragging on the cylinder walls. So we'll get this oil ring off and we'll clean these up. Yeah, this, this oil retention ring, this bottom ring is totally seized on this piston. So just total corrosion and rust inside there. Here's what was on the back side of the piston. All right, so this piston is jam-packed, full of rust, full of crud. It's no wonder, you know, it was really hard for this thing to, to turn over. Hopefully cleaning this up will, you know, free the rings up. We get the rings unseized, get it back together. And we don't have a few quarts of gas stuck in the intake. I think it'll finally fire. So we got the wrist pin out for cylinder number three. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this on camera or not, but there's some little areas where you can see pitting and it's really minuscule, tiny little areas. I did clean this up, but you can feel some variations on it really slightly. But the thing that would concern me about this engine, if it was going to be one that wasn't going to be overhauled, which this will be overhauled, so this will be replaced, 
is stuff like this. Although, if I remember correctly from what Sam was telling me, this is the lower time of the two engines and it was only a couple hundred hours. So it's got a rebuild time of, I believe, 16 or 1800 hours. I think it's 1600 hours on a TSI 0520. But because you'll have an airplane engine sit, and sometimes an airplane will sit in a hangar, outside of a hangar, wherever, it gets moisture in it. And that moisture, coupled with corrosive things in the atmosphere or other metals, starts to create something like that. And the thing that you always, uh, you know, the thing that I always worry about is, even though it, an engine is a lower time engine, you got to start worrying about the timed out components too. And, and uh, you know, just because it's a 2000 hour run out time, the time it's been sitting makes a big difference. I actually have a Cherokee uh, 160 that we did a video on a couple months ago. Well, I pulled the cylinders because there were some issues. And when I pulled the rods out, I noticed the exact same thing. And that engine only has, I think it's like 230 or 320 hours on it. But the overhaul is 18 or 20 years old. So that whole engine is gonna to have to come apart, be a complete rebuild just because of corrosion, because the corrosion can cause this to like lock up on the rod or something like that. So these are some of the things that, you know, we have to look at. That's why this whole airplane needs going over. That's why everything's getting overhauled and or rebuilt because we want it to be as safe as possible and we want everything right. But we also wanna get this thing running before we do that so it's running because it's bugging me in a way that I can't even explain. So. All right, so we got piston one's wrist pin out and it's the same way. I mean, it's just, it's starting to get some corrosion. This engine only has a couple hundred hours, but I promise you that this would definitely cause a catastrophic engine failure at some point, at some point, this coating is gonna completely flake off. It's gonna weld itself to that rod and that rod's gonna come flying through the case. All right, we got the pistons down here in the parts washer. I decided to pull the pistons off the engine because they, they just had so much corrosion on them and we really wanna get these really clean so the rings are really working in there real smooth and, and the way they're supposed to be. So we'll get these all cleaned up. We're also gonna get um, the front of this uh, intake connection. I wanted to get it all cleaned up and, and everything cleaned. At some point, everything on that whole engine, everything on that whole airplane is gonna have to be parts washed, cleaned, ice blasted. I hope that'd be really cool. Or some type of blasting and or cleaning because we're gonna have to get that thing looking brand new. So I think these are clean enough. We got most of the corrosion out of them. I think they're good enough to get the rings back on them, get them back on the rods, and get this thing put together. Even though we soaked this in the parts washer and scrubbed it, there's still a good bit of carbon that's just stuck, that's stuck on this piston down in the ring lands. We got all these rings cleaned up, got a lot of the carbon and stuff that were off of them. My hopes were to have a new set of rings to put in here. That didn't happen. So we do have some used ones. We are gonna be able to get this together so we can fire it up. It's not the perfect way. It's, you know, obviously in overhauling a, an airplane engine or maintaining one, you would never put used rings in one. I don't think, I mean, I've seen people do it before as far as just to continue uh, running one without overhauling it, but it's nothing that I would normally do. All right, so we'll get these rings 
back on the pistons and then we're going to get the pistons up in the cylinders and then hopefully get them back on the engine. I did clean up these wrist pins so hopefully they want to slide in a little nicer than they came out. That was a little bit of a battle. Which again, it's like all this carbon, like it, it just jams everything up. Not to mention all the corrosion too. That one aside. This one down. So there was a couple of gouges in the original piston that we got out um, of the engine. It looks like there might have been some debris in there jumping around. So luckily. We have a spare piston and rings that will work really well. I might even use some gloves today. And this is cylinder one. So there's a couple rough edges inside the cylinder I want to take care of. without a ring compressor. So those rings are really tight and really strong. Um, so it's, it's a little difficult without a ring compressor to get these down the bore, but uh, we were able to get this down the bores. All right, so we got got the uh, number one piston and the number one cylinder. <laughs> it's not easy to do without the uh, right compression tools, uh, ring compressor and everything, but it is doable. So we're going to get cylinder three piston in cylinder three. All right, we got these cylinders back on after pulling them on and off about 20 times. It's been absolutely crazy getting these two cylinders on. We got them on, it was a struggle. Not saying I'd wanna do this every day, but for as many times as we had these off and on, we learned a lot and I think, uh, I think we got pretty good at getting them off and on. So now we gotta get the bolts on them, get everything torqued down, get this put back together and get it outside. All right, we got the cylinders all torqued down. And look at this knowing how difficult it's going to be to get all of these uh, push rod tubes in place and, uh, and to get this finished up.
All right, the cylinders are on, the rockers are on, the push rods are in, the push rod tubes are in. Now let's see if our hard work paid off and this engine turns over a little bit better without all the squealing inside the cylinders and without all that friction. Let's see how it feels. I don't hear that. The engine's all loosened up. It's not making any noises anymore. It turns over just about as easy as engine one turns over, and that was our goal. I feel that we loosened the two worst ones up. I feel that you know we found that plugged up intake you know, with all the fuel in it, so I, I feel pretty good. I feel like we could get this together and it's gonna fire up. So let's get the intake on. Let's get the exhaust on. All right, so the intake is almost on once I tighten this up. All right, so the, most of the intake is on except for the front side. Let's actually put the front, let's put that intake on. I can't believe there was like a quart of fuel sitting in this intake. All right, let's get some of this heat shielding on before we get the exhaust manifold bolted on.
exhaust is on, all the sensors are on. We have all the plugs in, all the wires are hooked up. We have the baffling back on. So all we have to do yet is connect the fuel system and we can get this thing outside and see if it's gonna fire up. So we got the whole injection system all hooked back on. Everything looks good. All the wires are hooked up. Cylinders are on. This is a ton of work. Really excited to see if she's gonna start. Let's go find out. Hey, hey Sam, what's up brother? You're, I figured it'd be outside. Well, you're, you're just in time because we're gonna we're gonna pull everything out and- Just in time to pull everything out. Yeah, yeah, you have impeccable timing. So, <laughs> do you mind giving us a hand? No, I don't mind. Awesome, brother, thank out. you. Okay. <laughs> All right. We have the chocks actually. Sam, thank you for putting the chocks down. We have voltage and I, I, I know we've been here before. We've been here plenty of times trying to get engine number two started, but we did get a ton of work done to it. It feels better. So I'm feeling pretty good, Sam. I'm feeling pretty good. I want, how, I, how good? Uh, well, I'll, I'll, well, I'll let, I'll let a chainsaw, because you said something about cutting the airplane in half. Uh, we don't have to cut this in half. That would be really ugly. Besides, I mean, it, you know, it'd be, it'd be hard. It'd be a lot of work. So let's not do that. Let's get this thing fired up. That would make a nice looking desk right there, though. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I think it's going to start. What's, what's your bet? What's your guess? Is it going to start? I'm about... 30% thinking it's 30, gonna start. 30%. 30%. Really? 30%? Man. I've sat over here trying to start that a few times. I don't know about and, you. And I've sat over here and tried to start it probably 50 times. So he might be right. 30% might be actually a little more than what I was thinking, but, <laughs> but let's see. Let's go ahead and we'll give a little bit of throttle. I think it's primed already. Um, all right, we, everything's hot, Sam? Everything's hot. Everything's hot. Um, mixture is full forward. I'm just, I'm so nervous about this thing starting or not. So. Let's give it a clear prop. All right, go ahead, bud. Clear prop. All right, let's go ahead and fire up the left one. And then, so that should give us some more voltage to fire up the right one. Clear prop. All right, let's give that another shot. So this, this kind of ha helped before, so let's get this mixture up. All right, let's try getting this right one started. It may not be running like really, really good, but 
it's running. <laughs> so there's number two yeah on the right side number two engine it fired up <laughs> I, I gave you one month whoa, whoa. oh i didn't see one month i didn't see that far so that was one month from the time this engine started right and yes we're, we're almost right at it <laughs> no, I could have really wait you did say you did say that's right you did yeah, say no, up here you were like yeah uh, oh my, my gosh get that side started. that's right oh my dad. gosh actually Yo, you didn't Sam, have to wait a month I was holding out the whole time. I just wanted to like see if how many times I could get you to come right, to the have, airport and check on that engine. Yeah, you have two months so, to get this whole thing flying. Now, that is a bet <laughs> I'm not going to take. Just that uh, putting the spar straps for that for that AD that needs done is 500 hours. So we have we have. Remember, I told you there was a reason I parked this airport. Oh, it's like a seventy thousand dollar job. And the turbocharger fan. Yeah. Well, we got. That, so we do have a company that reached out to us and said they're going to help us with the turbos, the fuel system, the alternators, and the starters. What's so that, smell? Um, that would be cooking bird stuff. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. That was so awesome. Like two, I, two engines running. You. <laughs> thank you, you, Sam. Thank you. Everything needs overhauled. So we're going to have to pull all those things out. But it started. That was really right. cool. I think it would fly right now. Well, it would it would probably fly, I'm it would sure. Take off, and gravity's in our favor. We would get down. <laughs> right, right. We would definitely be able to land. I don't know how pretty it would be. Yeah, I'm I'm super stoked. So many of the folks that are invested in the project, and so many people that came along and donated to the GoFundMe, it went through the roof. They want to see this thing fly. Like I'm more excited about getting it flying, you know, for them. And I can't wait to see your face when this thing takes off and it can fly again i mean it's going to be a ton of work there's hundreds if not thousands of hours of work that needs done but i i, I know we can get it done i know with the community we can get it done um, there's a ton of ap's that have called and or and or stopped by here even and emailed i have thousands of emails to go through yet i've been overwhelmed it's been i am going to get through them and get people here and help um because we're gonna have to dissect these wings i've never done that before anybody want to buy my chainsaw yeah <laughs> so and sam has a chainsaw <laughs> for sale now guys make sure you guys like you subscribe ring the bell turn the notifications on go to the merch shop get some merch it supports the 401 we have some awesome stuff coming up and, you know, a lot of work to do on this thing. So check out the GoFundMe. We are so much higher than I thought we'd ever be. And it's going to take a ton of money to keep this thing flying, to get it flying, to get it restored. We hit 150000 in like two weeks or something. Like, you guys are absolutely phenomenal. That just, I, I know that's Sam, a, Sam amazing. called me and Sam was like, did you see the GoFundMe? I'm like, um, at that point I didn't. And he was like, you, you gotta look at it. So- I think I was in the hourly text. No, it's here, it's here, it's here. <laughs> right. We're gonna do some awesome things. We've been in touch with Angel Flights. We've been, Sam's been talking to everybody because he's ready to fly this thing on some missions. We have a really cool thing happening soon for the interior. It's still really dirty. I can't wait till it's not, uh, but we do have a really cool thing happening for that. Um, yeah, we're going to do some cool stuff. I'm so happy, I'm so stoked, but we should probably get this thing inside. Right. And we should probably sit down and, and make some plans. You know, I have some other airplanes. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I almost forgot about that. <laughs>